Okay, Jonathan, we are live. Yes, Bill. Hi out there in YouTube land. Hello, YouTube. Oh, I'm looking for my... Oh, there's my notes. Oh, I'm the wizard. Can you you see what I have to deal with, YouTube? (laughs) We were just cracking up a second ago. He stopped laughing because I didn't get the recorder on. Well, a couple seconds of silence. Welcome to WP Tonic, episode 55. Today, we're going to go through the news. We're going to go to the tip of the week. And of course, we're going to hit those plugins because once a month we do plugins. It's that time of the month. Exactly, Bill. So on the news, I'm going to leave the news, Jonathan, just real fast because I'm all excited at 4.3 Billy. You know, Billy, I think they named it after me. Well, it would be Wizard, wouldn't it? Wizard Billy. Anyway, for me, I think it's is it Billy Holiday. I forgot. I, I read the yeah, Billy definitely. Holiday and I really, really like it. I really, 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 really like it. Let me pull up my little short notes here. And they have a real nice tutorial. So if you go into WordPress, put 4.3 Billy, you'll find it. There's a little tutorial that runs you through real fast. The basic thing is the customizer. I've been a big fan of the customizer. Now it stands separate. And it does uh, pages. You can see the pages. You can see how it looks. I have a big iMac, which I really like. It's a little difficult when you're using a MacBook Pro. But an iMac, and you can spread it out. You can see it modified and changed right in front of you as you make the changes. Makes it very easy to move pages around, things like that. Big fan of the customizer. I know a lot of you old timers don't like that customizer. I don't know why. And I think it's going to be easier for people to understand when they learn it using the customizer to design their pages. Oh, yeah. I agree with you there, yeah. Bill. I think having it in one area must be improved. Yeah. The, the formatting shortcuts don't excite me because you have to know the shortcuts. You have to memorize them as opposed to go and just, you know, go and click on something. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. The uh, site icon, they call it. We call it a favorcon. The site icon makes it really easy to build what we used to call a favorcon. You make it 512 pixels by 512 pixels instead of 16. You can actually do more detail, and they look really nice. I probably made about five or six favorcon- or of these uh, site icons last night and today, playing with them and, and trying to see what looks really cool and even make them better. Uh, there was a real art to making favorcons. And other improvements, smooth admin experience. Oh, the, the um, security, better better security. So, yeah, security. We're all there for security. So, Jonathan, yeah. why don't you take it away? And that's, do you have any other thoughts or ideas? Uh, you've installed it, I know. Yeah, it's the passwords, isn't it? Because, yeah. it, you know, when you ask it to generate a password, it generates a much stronger password. Yeah. And um, I suggest that you copy it and <laughs> You don't lose. <laughs> I, 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 remember to back up your stuff because I um, I, I, I put 4.3 on seven sites and I lost one of them. When I got the white screen and it, there was a conflict with a plugin I had. And believe it or not, it was an SEO plugin that had um, Google Analytics hooked in with it. Yeah. It was yeah, a hybrid that- SEO plugin. It didn't work and it, and it yeah. shut down the whole site. So well, I had to uh, recover. I've had to recover twice now in the last three weeks, two different sites. Got the white screen of death. I'm getting a lot of practice on recovering uh, websites, so I have confidence. Yeah, it's all good, it's all good I'm, stuff. I'm sure happy we studied uh, backup plugins two months ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so we'll go on to the news. And it's not been a great news um, apart from Billy. Um, but the, there's been the ongoing um, discussion about the uh, 2, the 4.23 security update, the automatic update, um, and part of that was to deal with a, a, a security flaw in the um, API system of the shortcode functionality of WordPress. And basically, there was a discussion on one of our fellow podcasts. That's one of the granddaddies of WordPress podcasting, WordPress Weekly. And they had the chief czar of security. And I'm going to probably butcher his name, but even though Bill gave me... Bill knows a bit of Polish, so I didn't know. So it's Nikolai Bashinsky. What do you reckon, Bill? Close, Bashinsky. Bashinsky. And I do po- apologise to the gentleman deeply for butchering his name. He came on the show. They had, a, um, I think, over 30 to 40 minutes discussing. Um, it was an interesting interview. Um, I think it was really linked also blowing our own tramp- trumpet, but more Malton from Linda.com's trumpet. You know, when we had our 50th episode, we discussed about how WordPress org 
and the WordPress Foundation is organised. And um, I think they had, I think they had every right to do the update. I think the communication to the WordPress community about the update and about how it could affect certain plugins, blah blah blah, was handled very poorly, in my opinion. And um, he's, you know, some people are not going to like this, but on all the sites that I manage through WP Tonic and I manage my personally myself, I switch off the automatic updating. Um, because I'm managing these sites, I want full control. I want to make the decision. We keep a really good eye of all the security, and I get notified um, about them, and then I make the decision, and I make sure we've got full backups. Um, I think this whole affair has kind of damaged, has damaged the automatic update. Um, people's attitude to it. Um, I'm not going to blame, you know, say it, it's this person, that person. I, I personally feel it's more of a organisation problem. And like I say, we touched, uh, we had a kind of deep discussion with Morton on our 50th show about all that, didn't we, Bill? We sure did. That was a good show with Morton. Yeah. On those. So because he was a bit of a lacking in news, I did have um, I did have a look around. I, I have a, a pot around anyway, and I tend to waste an hour doing it. But you've got to keep – and I found an interesting article about uh, – which was one of the founders of Woo Themes um, that recently got bought out by Automatic. And one of the founders, Mark Forrester, who now is working for Automatic but got a, a lovely paycheck as well – um, it's quite a detailed interview. Um, it'll be in our show notes, folks, um, the link. And um, it's a quite a nice interview where he talks about, you know, how the cell, why it happened, um, how the how it's gone, you know, integrating Woo Themes staff with Automatic. There's nothing in it that's groundbreaking, but it's it's an interesting interview, so I thought I'd mention it. Another thing is an interview, another article um, on WordPress Weekly, um, the WP Tavern site, and it um, it's about you know the restless API, which is a continuous story, and how I think we also touched this with Morton on our fiftieth show, how the restless API is going to enable um, developers to build um, custom backends and front ends that aren't going to be linked directly to the traditional theme construction. Um, it's an interesting article. Um, and like I say, the link will be on our show notes. All right, Bill. That was pretty good about the restless API. Uh, someone who's not a developer would really be concerned about the restless API. No, it's just something to be aware of, and I think it will make a big difference. Um, one of the one of the one of the things about um, not developing locally, um, I I kind of develop locally initially, and then I move it to uh, my serve area. And I do that so the client, if I'm doing a job for the client, they can actually see that something's been done. Um, but one of the problems of doing that is the back end. If you log into the back end, you know, a lot of people log in from the front end. But if you're, if you're working in the back end, every ch- change you make, the page has to refresh. And that page is refresh, has to do a call to the server. And if, you've got, if, it, if your connection's a little bit slow or your server's busy, it can be pretty slow for that page to refresh. And when they when this restless API does come out more and gets more sophisticated, one of the things they're hoping is that that refresh page won't go to the server. It'll be done in the browser, so it's going to be a lot quicker. So API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it's yeah. WordPress, of course. WordPress it's, Application it, Programming Interface. Yeah, it's, show, it, it's a form of JSON. It, it's a way... Um, it's a bit like, um, it's just like a lot of um, these kind of, it's just a, a greed format how information can be transferred from one system to another in a, a really nice, clean structure. Um, half the problems of getting one system to talk to another is 
that you've got to do so much cleaning up of the data before you can import it into a, another database system. But JSON is well recognized. Okay. It does a nice job, Bill. So, so that's basically the news and things that are happening around the WordPress community on the blogs and, of course, at WordPress.org and WordPress.com. Yeah, we're on to our tips, tips, and, tri- tips and tricks, isn't it, Bill? Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. Yes. It's going to be a new little section, just a little thing, um, if I can find something that I think. And it came up and um, came up again. And it's a, it's a function, you know, what is a function? Well, basically, a function um, is in a lot of different computer languages, but it's at the core of PHP and WordPress. The whole of WordPress is basically one big function file in some ways. It's a load of different libraries and they're all coded up in PHP. Um, and the basic structure block of that is functions. And also you've got a function file that comes with every every version of WordPress. And that's when that's what you, you normally if you're doing PH, PHP um, coding changes, you put those changes in your PHP in your function file. Um, one one function that's very old, it, it, was, it was introduced around, I think it was introduced around 202, 203. I can't remember what version of WordPress was around then. Was a function called auto-op. And this is nasty. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 mean, I don't know why. I'm not saying it should be just totally removed, but they should have something in the interface that gives you that give you some options about this. And what does this do? Basically, it's got the um, it, every paragraph. Um, we so I know some clients that never put the text going to text view; they always go into the visual view. But all your markup, um, everything's marked up text wise using HTML. And one of the basic HTML tags is the P tag paragraph. Um, this nasty, um, it tries, it, tr- it was trying to deal with people that really didn't know anything and it was trying to help them. So every, if it, if it senses a paragraph, it puts that beginning P and that end P tag there automatically. Um, but but like any, I don't particularly like any automatic system which you've got no direct control over. Is that it does its best, but half the time it puts a beginning p tag and the end tag where there is no paragraph. It double wraps. It can also really um, mess with you when it comes to, especially on front pages and sometimes in the sidebars of your widgets. When you're trying to formulate something, it puts a P, you know, a, don't ask me why, but it just does it. And it it can it can really cause you to really try if you're not aware of it, and I wasn't for a while, and then somebody said, Oh, that, that's caused by this function. I said, What function? Is it go and read about it? And then when I found out, um, I, I literally wanted to get a gun and shoot myself because when it was really um when I found out about it, I was dealing with a client's website and I was on a time on the clock and I had to get it and it, I was just really struggling. And so if you're having odd problems lining text up on your page and your blog and just you got to be – it's probably down to this auto-op bill. Yep. And you know what I just did? I just playing with the uh, visual on a, a test – and I was playing with the bullets because I was having problems the other day and all the formatting and so on and so forth. Probably was but, this. But what you do, you're still getting a double wrap, but it, it works really well. When you hit return, if you hit shift, it won't put a bullet in, of course, and it will keep the paragraph going. So if you hit return, hit shift, I'm looking at the text file. And just look at the text file and see what it does. It does that uh, forward slash li. And anyway, that helps a lot. Hit yeah. So when you hit return... If you hit return, it's going to create a new paragraph in the bullet or whatever. So, but if you hit shift, it'll tighten it up. Just yeah, a little, little trick. Just did that. There's so many little tricks in uh, WordPress. Well, this is one of the things people will just totally expect it to, you know, and compare. But don't get me wrong, compared to, compared to other 
contact management. And, I, you know, it's been a while since I've used anything else. Um, but, you know, they've got their place, you know. Um, I'm not going to kind of say it's this, that, but still compared to a lot of other content management systems, it's still one of the easiest to use. But it still has a lot of these little things that, you know, that you've got to learn even if you're not a developer. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, there's all, all sorts of little tricks. You know, just thinking in the broad pictures, uh, anytime you learn any kind of software system or process, you have to learn something. You have to learn about it. I mean, you just can't jump into something, even on themes. Themes and different kinds of themes can be difficult to learn. Well, that 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 is ongoing debate in the WordPress community because you know a lot of these larger commercial themes they do a lot of. They, this is one of the things that. WordPress, when you're, you know, it was another thing that caused a bit of a discussion. You know, if you've got a free theme, or come, you know, and you're trying to get it into WordPress.org, they they now insist that it, it, all your options go into the customizer. Um, well, that caused a bit, and then they shut the theme shop down because they had so many to look at. And right. that caused a bit of a discussion. Obviously, the commercial WordPress marketplaces, the main one is Theme Forest. Right. They they don't have that, so you get you get explosion of of custom screens with loads of different options, and, and it could be very very different from one theme to the other. Bill. Right. Right. No, it's true. And and page builders too. Of course, we can talk about that some other time. But there's page oh, builders. Oh, we out have. There. Well, you have, haven't we, Bill? Yep. We've had a bit. We've had a. And, and everyone knows I use Genesis with Dynamic, and I'm learning it. Yes, but I, I've stuck with it. You know, I haven't deviated. I think that's been good. Yeah. All so right, let's drive on. So what next, Bill? So we got to give give WP. That's not. Nice. We're going to talk about we're talking about plugins, but um, it, it, like. We're going to try and have a plug-in show once a month, folks. But we're going to have a theme. Oh, yeah, we got to discuss and, uh, and our theme this this month is um, Stripe. Um, yeah, Stripe. Yeah, that's all the money. Yeah, go ahead. Stripe is a competitor to PayPal. Um, it's it's the system that I try and use with with my clients, and it's the system that I use for myself. It's... It's not all embracing. There will be some scenarios where um, you won't be able to use Stripe because of the the way it's set up. But compared to my compared to PayPal, and I'm um, a front end and a WordPress consultant, but I have developed a lot of websites, and I know for a fact that the really hardcore developers that I've hired and worked with they really despise. PayPal and the API system and working with it um, because it's an old API, you know, and it there's there's aspects of it that a lot of developers struggle with. But when they go to Stripe, it, it's a much newer system, much, um, in a lot of people's opinion, much better coded up, and the API system is much more... Um, uh, responsive and stronger, more resilient. So I tend to use it a lot. Um, so let's say you're, you're, let's say you're not, you know, you don't want Woo WooCommerce. Now maybe you've only got a couple digital products, uh, or maybe you've got a physical product, but it's just one physical product and. You're going to deal, you know, people fill in the form and you'll deal with the shipping and you have one price that covers shipping throughout the USA. You're keeping it simple, which if you only got one or two products, I would suggest that you keep it simple. Um, so you don't want all, you know, you don't want like to go with a hosted solution like Shopify or big e-commerce yeah, they're a great system, but let's say you just got a couple physical or you got some digital products. How are you gonna how are you gonna set it up in WordPress? Let's say let's say you've done things the right way, and I'm not saying I've done it the right way. Let's say that you've built up an audience first. 
let's say you're in some niche and you've done like all like you've listened to and read and you've built built up your email list and you've done your social media and you've written a lot of good content and you're getting people coming to the website and it's getting to, and then you've decided to sell a kind of product in that area but you know if you've done that and you've been using wordpress you don't particularly want to have to go to shopify because you've built all your seo and your traction and you got you got used to wordpress so um if it's if it's digital stuff that you're selling like pdfs um courses um you know things like that um maybe easy digital downloads which is the ma- the ma- the major plugin in Pippin Williamson's kind of library of commercial plugins and um I'm a big fanboy of Pippin and he came on our show a couple of weeks ago and he's just a great guy isn't he Bill Yep he is he's really a sharp programmer and he's fairly young still he's got Yeah yes he needs Super intelligent and blah 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 yep. makes you sick, doesn't yep. it? Uh, um, he does. He does. Uh, his key product is easy digital downloads, and it's become really quite dominant in this sector. It's my. I would say. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most. Obviously, it's difficult because I, I've got a lot of experience with all this stuff. So compared to WooCommerce, I think it's a lot easier to get set up. Um, the core. The core of it easy digital downloads is free how they make money is they've got a load of sub plugins which aren't free and one that isn't free is their stripe integration um i'm just going to give you the starter price for one site um the license for their stripe sub plugin is 49 dollars, which isn't outrageous i don't think um and that basically allows you to communicate with Stripe and deals with people downloading a digital product. And I think if you've got, you know, I, I think like you, um, Bill, I think if you got hold of it, I think after a couple of days you could get set up with it because, you 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 know, it won't be that hard for you. Um, another area which a lot of people look for a simplistic solution is if they're a non-profit. You know, obviously WordPress is free um, of the content management system. Obviously, I'm a total fanboy and junkie of WordPress. You no, know, but I'm trying to be as unbiased as I can compared to other content management systems. It's still, I would say, the most easiest to use and set up. So that they set up their non-profit website using WordPress, and then they want donations. And there's a number, you know, a lot of people do use PayPal because there's a number of well-established plugins um, that give you various functionality around PayPal. But I, like I say, I prefer Stripe, um, and there was less. There were less solutions and a newer player that's come on that's doing some exciting stuff in the kind of um, non-profit area using WordPress is GiveWP. And um, they've developed this and they're using really the kind of easy digital download model. The core is free and they've got these um, sub-plugins and that's how, you know, support and the sub plugins and um their stripe um plugin for one site is 62 dollars so it's a little bit more expensive um at the time i think about a week two weeks ago one of the things that they were working on is that if you wanted to donate month after month you couldn't do it utilizing their plugin and I think they were working on that, and it was one of their top um, things they were working on. But they said, you know, they also were working on some of the bugs, some of the minor bugs in the core plugin. So I don't know if they got round to that functionality. Um, 
another one that could be really interesting is a lot of people using gravity forms as a non-profit you probably haven't got the developer's license but you might have somebody who's developing the site for you that does have the development license um if you got that you get a you get the free stripe plugin the problem is that it's not a bad plugin that comes from gravity but it's pretty basic about how it works with stripe no uh developer called no- naomi bush uh has developed she's very experienced in working for stripe she actually worked for stripe for a while um, and she's an experienced WordPress developer. She's brought out a range of additional plugins that really offer a lot of additional functionality when it comes to Gravity. And her Stripe plugin, which is free, by the way, uh, it offers you to, if you make a donation, you could do it, the same donation would go through month after month if you um, want that. And it could be a solution for a non profit. If they've got um, either somebody <laughs> volunteering to develop the site for them as reasonable experience, or that they've got a professional developer, they could use these additional plugins and then really um, set up a really some really sweet solutions for a non-profit or for a commercial enterprise. Bill, um, the way she makes money is that if you want support or if you want her to do some additional constant customization for you she charges for that bill you got it so jonathan we need to wrap this up and uh, drive on here we got a second show to do yep and not 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 for wordpress but for real estate yep so what did you think of that bill was that useful information yep it was and it was good to listen today um looking at it it's always good you know the more you listen the more you figure out and you put little pieces together and what what you're really doing is you're telling the story you're telling a story about the people around WordPress. And, of course, we've talked to just about everybody around the WordPress community in this show. So really it's well, storytelling, no, and, it's, it's, and, and you tie those stories to the systems. And it's a step inch by inch to the cinch as you go forward in WordPress. Yeah, well, I've got, um, I'm looking forward to our um, live um, interview then um, next week. We've we got, we got WP Bob on the show mm-hmm. for August. And he's well, very well known in the WordPress community. He's an educator and a trainer. So the theme of our live show is going to be training and education around WordPress. That's good. So next week it'll be... And then uh, I've got another quick, exciting um, announcement. Our live show in September. Obviously, we've got our WordPress meetups, but, you know, we'll be going down. They're both... One's in California and one's in Las Vegas. So we'll be going down on those on a Friday and we do our shows on Thursday. Right. But our September guest is going to be um, – oh, God, my mind's my – mind. <laughs> oh, God, my mind. Oh, I apologize. You know. my, my mind's gone blank. Um, I, I have to pronounce it. I apologize. My mind's gone blank. It will come back, but we've got exciting guests in September, and next time I'm going to remember who it is. Sorry about that, Bill. Yep, too much programming. Yes, too many I've numbers. Been work- I've been working at it today. And I have too. I have yep. too. I've been working uh, quite a bit. So shall we wrap you up now, Bill? Yep. Okay, I'll see you later. Remember, remember out there, go to WPTonic.com, episode 54. Or go to WPTonic for all these fun stuff and sites. Yep. That's great. See you later, folks. Aloha. Aloha.